use of it, I'm sure. I, uh, I need McKenna to make a decision. Which is going to be difficult because McKenna doesn't make this decision, does she? <laughs> She's me. Mm -hmm. Your face is covered. You're you're good. Okay, if I give you a choice. I don't think much. She's uh, also This five dollar bill. See, it's, it's a real five dollar bill. Or this five dollar bill. It's a real five dollar bill. Do I see it? Have to put it in your your purse <laughs> or your pocket. Yeah, that's what she's doing. Trying to figure out this trick. She's trying to. Oh, you're just trying to overthink it. Which one do you really? Want? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Lean on. Thank you for your help. I preached for you for the last three weeks. I don't even get no. But you would have the dirty one. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> How much is that worth? So you're telling me that how it appears does not change the value of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Do you know what that's called? It's called grace. <laughs> Amen. That's a visual for everybody to get in your head the next time that the devil or people tell you that if you become stained, if you become wrinkled, if you become worn, if you have become spotted, if you have become dirty, that God no longer has the same value of you. That you can remember that when God looks at that, he doesn't see the dirt on it. He still knows what the value of it is. Yep. Amen. He doesn't see the dirt, the junk, the filth, the, the things that have driven you to your knees. Uh -huh. okay. Amen. All, all those were just circumstances. But your value did not change. Yeah. And and I, I want to go, I want to take you another direction. value of it either. You increase the value
value of it and it has become counterfeit. And besides that, how can you increase when you are the single most valuable thing that God has? Amen. How, how can you ever increase in value when you are the most valuable? When was the last time that you had a thought go through your head that you thought for a while and you really concentrated on it and you said to yourself, I am the most valuable thing that God has. You need to. Amen. You need to. Because everything in this world is conditioned to show us that condition is everything. Yep. Amen. That the condition of this bill makes it less valuable. That the condition of your life makes you less valuable. That the condition of your heart makes you less valuable. That the condition of your marriage that the condition of your checkbook, that the condition of everything, how you, it, the world has conditioned us yep. to believe that condition is everything. Amen. But it's not. Nope. Possession is everything. Possession. Mm -hmm. I am, you are, we are a possession of God's. And because it's God's, it is valuable. Amen. Do you hear me? Yep. Let me, let, me, let me illustrate that a little bit before I dig into some scripture. When you lose someone and you have lost a loved one, the smallest of things that have absolutely no value whatsoever, they suddenly have tremendous value. Yep. Not because of what they are, but because of who they belong to. Yep. Amen. 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 Let's put it in monetary ways. This morning, I come downstairs and Tammy is watching an Elvis movie. We happen to enjoy Elvis movies. I was always a big Elvis fan. I don't know why they finally suddenly decided they were going to show a bunch of Elvis movies, but they are. I'm so thrilled because it's something that's yeah, worth watching. Mm -hmm. But let me just put it to you this way. There was, in the last month or so, there was a pink Cadillac that was owned by Elvis. And it sold for did anybody see the article? I'm thinking that it said $517,000. Not because the Cadillac is that worth that but because it was owned by Elvis. Mm -hmm. That Cadillac is now more valuable than every other Cadillac that was made that year <laughs> because of who owned it. Okay? Now, go with me.
chapter 4. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, Thank you. that Thank we you may you. obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You can see. I am. Uh, struggling to not preach three different messages that are rolling in my head. Bless them, Lord. They're not, it's not time for them, so pray for me that I can stay focused. Bless you, Lord. This, uh, this $5 bill, this dirty $5 bill, it's wet, it's nasty, I will have to use hand sanitizer. Money is one of the filthiest things you're ever going to yep. touch. Amen. Because everybody has touched it. Yep. It's got germs all over it. Guarantee you that you run an analysis of basically every one, five, and ten, twenty dollar bill, and there's some trace of drugs on it. Mm hmm. But it hasn't changed the value of it. Nope. Because somebody with authority made it. And they established the value of that currency. And I want to tell you this morning that you and I have been wonderfully and fearfully oh. made. Amen. We have been made in the image of the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And we and our value has been established in heaven. Amen. I want you to hear that. I want you to really hear that. Because right now we are in the midst of a turmoil in our world that is constantly, it is attacking. Yep. It is attacking our Christian values. It is attack, attacking our faith. It is attacking morals. It is attacking common sense. It is tearing down every possible thing that God is attached to mm -hmm. that they think that they can destroy. Amen. And I want you to hear from the pulpit with the authority of the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit, I want you to hear Bless you, Lord. that you and your value has not changed Amen. because the world has decided that we no longer have value in it. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want you to hear and I want you to know that in heaven where you and I were minted God established our value when he made us in his image and in his likeness. Amen. Amen. That at the very beginning, when he made us in his image and in his likeness, before we were ever created, it was established that the Son of God would give his life for us mm -hmm. because God esteemed us so valuable that his son is the only price that could be paid to purchase us. Yep. Yep. And because of that, you and I, humanity, is the most valuable thing that God has. Amen. And your value has not tarnished because your life 
has been tarnished. Amen. Your value has not diminished because sin has affected you. You are not less than because you have sinned. You are not less than because you are not what the world says you have lived up to your potential or that you're not liberal enough to be of value. At this present time, here is where we are. We are in a condition that if you are not of a liberal mind, you are devalued yep. in this world. Amen. Yep. yep. A friend of mine from high school sent me a message. He has worked for a company for 25 years. And he is just a few years from retirement. And last week, the managers of that company came to him and they told him that he better start minding what he posts on Facebook. That he better stop posting anything that supports Trump. And that he better stop posting anything that goes against anybody else's liberal opinion if he wants to make it to see his retirement. Because they can't have someone that is not supporting a liberal agenda. It creates too much problem. His work for 25 years has now become less valuable. Yep. All right. This is where we are. This is the world we're living in. And I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. This is going to get a lot worse. This is going to get a lot worse. We are at the beginning of that time that we are entering into the Great Tribulation. It is, it is not a question anymore. We are there. The great city of Babylon is coming from Revelation. The great city of Babylon is the nation of Islam. And it is coming. It is here. It is overtaking. And it is devaluing and it is minimalizing all of us. Mm -hmm. And I know that that is heavy and I know that it's fearful. But I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. Your value has not grown. Amen. Though the world says you are of no value. Suddenly, suddenly the United States Mint says we have a coin shortage and coins don't have value anymore. Hmm. They've always had value, now they don't have value because the people that minted them said that they don't have value. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now catch this. The one that minted you has never hmm. said that you don't have value. Amen. Amen. The one that made you said, you hold on. Yep. Amen. You endure to the end because I'm coming back. I'm, do you hear me today? He is not coming back for himself. Mm -mm. He does not need to come back to prove that he is God. Nope. He does not need to come back to this earth to prove anything. He is solely coming back to this earth to get his possession. Amen. And that is you and I. Amen. We are so valuable in the eyes of God that he will stand and fight and declare war over this world Amen. and fight for you and I. And at the time that it is all said and done, he is going to come and take us home to be with him. It does not matter how wrinkled, nope. how wet, how discarded and how devalued 
Amen. Of the princesses that he made you to be. You are his creation. You are his value. You are his crown. You are his righteousness. Amen. Yeah. You hear me today? This world says that we have no value anymore. And I'm telling you, they're wrong. They're wrong. Mm -hmm. Are we going to have to behave in different ways than what we've ever had to? I'm afraid that we're probably going to have to. I'm afraid that we're very quickly approaching that time that we're going to have to behave in ways that we didn't want to. Mm -hmm. That we're going to have to be fearful of people. Oh, but don't you let... Uh -uh. Don't you let the devil tell you that you're not valuable. Amen. Let me tell you why you stand and fight. Let me tell you why that you endure to the end. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why you lift up your head. You become joyful. Because when you see these things approaching, you lift up your head for your redemption draw it not. Amen. Amen. Because let me explain it to you yet again with a five dollar bill. There is coming a time that the Lord is coming and he is going to redeem every one of us out of the drawer that somebody has put us back in, mm -hmm. in the jar, yep. in the worthless container, in the never thought of again. Anybody have that jar for your change? You know, the one when you throw it in, you never think about it again until it gets too full? Huh? Oh, mom had them. We had, had to hunt, 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 hunt to find them. But they, we knew they were there somewhere. But mom's, mom kept every, everything she could get except for quarters because dad wouldn't let her have any. <laughs> now, I know that sounds strange, but that was dad's car wash money. So he mm -hmm. never gave her any of his quarters. He had quarters everywhere. Mm -hmm. I pulled six bags of quarters out of one car. Just going through the, just going through the trunk and in the, in the seats and such, he had bags full of quarters. So he could stop and wash his car whenever he wanted to stop and wash his car. <laughs> Mom had nickels and dimes and pennies. And she filled up jars like this with nickels, dimes, and pennies. And every major appliance that they bought, do you know how they bought it? They bought it with nickels, dimes, and pennies because Mom saved all those up. And that's when she went and bought it. Yeah. Put it back and nobody knew about it. Nobody ever thought about it. They were just now found in pennies. And they had no value whatsoever to anybody else. Oh, but there is coming a day that the Lord is going to come back. Mm -hmm. And he is going to pull all of us nickels, dimes, and pennies out of the places that the world has forgotten that they've even shoved us. All oh, the hidden places, the places where we've hidden in our homes. The places where we've had, where we've had and, and stayed and said, God, even so come Lord Jesus. And we've looked up and he said, I'm waiting for your arrival. I'm looking and I'm waiting and I'm not giving up. I'm going to hold on until you come. And the world has forgot that we're even there. But he hasn't forgot. Uh, he hasn't forgot where we are. Uh, he hasn't forgot a one of them buried in the hillside. He hasn't forgot a one of them buried at sea. He hasn't forgotten none of them that have served me. I've lifted up their heart to him and said, Oh Lord, have mercy upon me. I bet you the verse.
It's grace that reaches in, wipes off, straightens out, mm -hmm. and cashes in. Yep. Amen. It's grace that does that. But we are here. We're in this time. Okay. Let me let me address one more thing. That means Amen. You were chosen. Yep. Because the Lord has chosen us to be that generation. Yep. This generation that endures a tribulation that a world has never seen before. Yep. Amen. It's our, it's ours. Mm -hmm. We can be fearful. And we can say, I don't want to, and I don't want to. Sure. But I am reminded I've been chosen to. <laughs> Amen. And if I have been chosen to, that means I am able to. Amen. Yeah. And because I've been chosen and I'm able, I am blessed. Amen. Yeah. I am blessed. Yeah. You realize yeah. what that means? Huh. Does anybody really, have you really put any thought to what it means to be of that generation? That means one of two things are about to happen to all of us. We are either going to mar be martyred for the kingdom of Christ, and that's mm -hmm. scary. I don't want to die, nope. and I don't want none of you to die. I don't want that to happen, but it's mm -hmm. coming. It really is. I'm yep. sorry, but it is. It's coming. Amen. We're either going to die and end up in the grave and he's going to come back after us or we are that generation that are alive and remain. Uh -huh. There is but one generation in all of creation that is going to be able <laughs> that is going to be able to stand and look up and see the King of Kings and Lord of Lords descending from the clouds and be able to look and see our loved ones raised from the dead and rise to meet him in the air. We are the only generation that will be able to know what it is to be changed in a moment and a twinkling of an eye and rise up to meet him. We are that generation. We are that generation. And that generation, my friend, is blessed. Oh, we may have to endure. Morning may endure for the night. Oh, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Anybody else feel what I feel this morning? Yep. Amen. Amen. Oh. So what are we to do? That's, that's why I want to pray this morning. I believe that we all need to start fasting and praying, seeking the face of God, to find out what we should be doing. Because we need to be doing something, because I don't want to just be here. Amen. I want to be active. Yep. 
I want to, I want to, I want to endure, but you don't endure by doing nothing. Yep. Amen. You don't endure by doing nothing. Nope. May come a time that we can't gather here at the building. When we can't gather at the building, then we'll have to gather at home. There may come a time that we may have to find us a compound and all live together. There may come a time that we have to put guards and guard it to be able to keep ourselves alive. There, those times may come. Yep. Amen. But preacher, what are we going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to trust God. Amen. Because here's what he told me to do. He told me to trust him. Yep. Because I am a valuable creation. And I am a chosen generation. I have been chosen for such times as these. And so have you. Let us, let us be thankful for every situation that has driven us to our needs. Amen. Let us be thankful. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to recommend if you need prayer, and I say this in jest, if you need prayer, maybe you should have Cassandra and Jason pray for you. <laughs> they needed water. <laughs> they needed a little rain to have water in their well. Boy, did it rain. <laughs> but let's look at that literally now. Let's look at that. There was a need. Yep. Amen. And God said, I will provide your needs. Yep. <clears throat> Amen. He is faithful. Amen. Therefore, let us approach the throne of God. And we may have grace in the time of need. And I need grace today. Amen. Because I feel like Peter. I stand before you and I preach boldly. And I'll be done in a few minutes and I'll go back to being fearful. <laughs> Say, preacher, what do you mean? Peter said, I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Yep. None of us, none of us are completely faithful all the time. Nope. Amen. But grace, grace is what covers all the times when grace still makes us the same back. You should be here. Because God doesn't say, oh, now you're only worth $4.95. <laughs> oh, now you're only worth $4.80. Oh, that was a big one. Now, Brian, you're only worth $4. It says five on the outside, but you're only worth four. That's not how God works. God says, wait a minute. My picture on there, not yours. Yep. God says, that's me. That's not you. I put me, I put me. I put me inside of you. Yeah. Me. I have not lost value. I have not lost power. I have not lost authority. I am in you. Therefore, you are the same value. Amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Yep. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Be glad. Oh, be glad. There's a song. Oh, say, but I'm glad, I'm glad. Hey, things aren't the way they used to be, and they're never going to be that way again. Nope. 
those those carefree times are gone, where we can just talk about those things and all oh, everything you know, our poor little pitiful problems. You know, things are a lot bigger now than what they used to be. Mm-hmm. But oh, say I'm still glad. Amen. I'm still glad. My sins are still under the blood. The blood is still covering my sins. I am still saved. I am still the value that God made me, and He's still coming back after me. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. We are of that generation, and I know that we are. You are too. And That is not the truth. That is not the truth. 